Now on, on with this question, we're just going to have a quick look through it. Uh, the first thing is we've done most of this already, or at least the, the hard work already, and that's the, the critical path side of things. Uh, have a look back at the clip if you didn't see that. Uh, now have your solution ready. If you haven't done it, then go back and do it now because I'm going to be referring to the to the graph. I'm going to start by just trying to draw this Gantt chart, and I'm using Excel here. It's not perfect; it should be on graph paper. But zero, the numbers are to the right of the lines they represent. So this line here is zero. This line here is 28. Okay, so the numbers are to the right. Uh, now each activity, I've made a coloured bar. Rep and the length of the activity represents the number of days that the activity takes. Now, to show how to do a Gantt chart, I'm going to start by filling in the most urgent things to do, which is critical path. A must start and finish at certain times. C must start at 10 and finish at 21. So I'll take C and paste it in here. I'll start at 10 finish at 21 and so on until we've got all the critical activities in place um, like this. So there's no room for manoeuvre with these critical activities. I must start and start at 29 and finish at 45 and M must start at 45 and finish at 54 like that M takes 9. Um, now that's one of the critical paths. There's another critical path. Uh, so you might say, why did you do one rather than the other? Well, just because I decided to. B. Oh, got a bit of a bit of room for maneuver. Would be B can start as soon as the project starts. So I could start B here. Just make a bit of room for space here. But B doesn't have to start that early. B doesn't have to finish until 14. So it actually could start and finish there or there. Now it could get messy if some if some other jobs have about 20 days um, slack in the system. Like this has got three different starting and finishing times. Um, if it's got 20 starting and finishing times, it takes ages to draw it out. So we don't need to draw all of them, just the earliest and latest. So what this represents is B could start at north and finish at at uh, third 14, but it doesn't have to. It could because it doesn't have to finish until 16 it could start as late as 2 and this gives B a total float of 2. D uh, D can start as early as 14 which is here start as early as 14 but it doesn't have to finish until 21 it takes 5 so we don't have to have started until 16 to have finished by 21 that's D uh, 8 so E is next what about H E is next. E doesn't have to. F e could start at 14 as well, if we're ready, and we have to be. Sorry, we don't have to be though. Sorry. Uh, e doesn't have to finish until 33. It takes 15, so it doesn't have to start until 18, and that gives E a total float of four. There. Imagine this bar floating. It can go from here to here. That's four days uh, float. I. I'll do one more, and then I'll fill the rest in. So this is H, it's not I at all. H uh, is a critical activity starting at 21, finishing at 33, and there is no room for manoeuvre there. So I'm going to put H here, starting at 21, finishing at 33. Right, so I finished the Gantt chart there. Uh, next part of the question, uh, well I'll do this, F total float on activity D and F. So from this, the, the float on D is 2, and on F is 8. Basically, you work out what's the earliest time it can start, and what's the latest time it can start, and that gives you the total float. So for D, the earliest time it can start straight from the, straight from the chart is, the graph is 14. The latest time it can start is 16, because it's got to be finished by 21, and it takes 5. For F, the earliest time it can start is also 14. That's node 3. Uh, we've got to be at 8 by 42. So F must have left 3 at 22. So it can start any time from 14 to 22, giving it a float of 8. The next question that we're asked 
Oh, if we've done the Gantt chart, is the chief engineer is on day 15 and day 25, and we're going to list the activities that must be happening on day 15 and day 25. Now, this is where my labelling is not good. Day 15 is actually 14 here, and 25 is actually 24 here. Uh, because this is day one, it's not day zero. Uh, so what must be happening on day 14? Well, C must be happening on day 14. Now, B might not be. If it started bang on, bang on at time zero, it doesn't have to be happening here. D doesn't have to be happening on day 14, day 15 either. Uh, it could be delayed. E doesn't have to be happening here, and nor does F. On day 25, G has to be happening, as does H. E definitely has to be happening, no matter where we move these bars, E definitely is happening on day 25. And F is also happening on day 25. This means we need at least four different workers. Um, so that's answering the question there. I'm now just going to show you how, how to allocate all these jobs to different people. Basically, we go through them. We put the, the critical activities to workers originally. So I've called this worker Z. He has to do one of the critical paths. If there's other critical activities that must be done by another worker, I'll call that Y. Now I'll go through all the other jobs, and basically I'm going to allocate them in order of what's the most urgent. B has to have started by three, by two, sorry. So we've got to get B started as soon as possible, and that means allocate B as soon as you've got a spare worker. Worker Z, worker Y can start B at time zero. Now the next urgent is D, which must be started by here. Start it as soon as you can. So you might notice I'm saying one thing and doing another here. The next urgent is E, has to be started by here. Uh, unfortunately we've got no worker available to start it by then, so we need another worker, call that worker X. Worker X can start it as soon as possible there. The next urgent is F, which must be started by here. Uh, now again, with none of these three workers can start it in time, so we need another worker. Give it to that worker at the soonest possible time that they're available, which is there. The next urgent is J, which must be started by here. Uh, now we can give J to worker X, who's free at this time. You can start the job here. So worker X has got nothing to do for, for four days there. Uh, L is the next urgent, and again we need, an, we're going to give this to this worker. Can't start it as soon as we'd like, but uh, doesn't have to wait until the very last moment to do this. And the next job is N, which has got a bit of free time. We can give that to this person starting at day 40. So if you didn't get what I did there, go back through this clip, you'll see that we need four workers, we don't need workers V and workers U.